Get ready, this winter could be one of the most extreme we've seen in over a decade. Early signs are pointing toward a pattern that could deliver repeated arctic blasts, major snowstorms, and a very active storm track. In this video, we'll look at what's behind this setup, compare it to past years, and reveal where the coldest and snowiest weather is most likely to hit. Our first major factor this winter is the Enzo pattern, and this year it's walking a fine line. Right now, we have a weak La Nina in place with Pacific waters about 0.5 to 0.7 degrees Celsius cooler than average. That's just barely strong enough to be classified as a La Nina, and it raises an important question. Will it hang on through winter or fade to neutral? Most forecast models suggest that by January or February, La Nina may weaken or even break down entirely, transitioning toward a cool Enzo neutral state, around negative 0.3 to 0 degrees Celsius anomalies. That shift would have big implications because La Nina winters usually bring an active northern jet stream and frequent clippers across the northern tier, while Enzo neutral winters tend to be more variable, sometimes with blocking events that can unleash more Arctic outbreaks. The key takeaway is that whether La Nina hangs on or fades, it's still a setup for a big winter. If La Nina persists, expect a steady stream of storms and cold shots through early winter. If it weakens, late winter could be even more unpredictable with blocking patterns allowing bitter Arctic air to dive south for extended stretches. And speaking of the Pacific, that takes us to the second big player this winter is something you might not hear about very often, but it can completely reshape the jet stream. Across a large area in the northern Pacific, sea surface temperatures are running well above normal, forming what forecasters call the blob. This isn't just a patch of warm water, it's a massive heat source that pumps energy into the atmosphere above it. When you get water this warm over such a large area, it tends to build a persistent ridge of high pressure over the North Pacific and Western North America. Think of this ridge as a giant atmospheric roadblock. It forces the jet stream to bulge northward over the west coast, but when the jet stream rises in one place, it has to dip somewhere else. And where does it dip? Usually right over the central and eastern U.S. That dip, or trough, is the perfect highway for Arctic air to plunge south, often repeatedly. This is why winters with a strong warm pool in the North Pacific often turn out colder and stormier for the Northern Plains, the Midwest, and the Great Lakes. It's the same pattern we saw during the brutal 2013-2014 to winter when the blob helped lock in a deep trough for months at a time. And this year's blob isn't just present, it's strong. If it holds through the winter, it will work hand in hand with the weak La Nina or Enzo Neutral to keep the jet stream active and amplify those cold outbreaks. In other words, this warm water could be one of the main engines driving a stormy, snowy setup for millions across the northern U.S. The last and arguably most important piece of the puzzle is the polar vortex. And this is a term you've probably heard before, but it's often misunderstood. The polar vortex isn't just a single storm. It's a massive ring of winds high up in the stratosphere that circles the Arctic, keeping the coldest air bottled up near the pole. When the vortex is strong and stable, it acts like a lid, locking frigid air in place and allowing much of the U.S. to stay relatively mild. But this year, signs are pointing toward a weaker, more disrupted polar vortex, and that's when things get interesting. A weaker vortex allows the jet stream to become wavier, opening the gates for lobes of Arctic air to escape and plunge south. These outbreaks can last for days or even weeks, creating those memorable cold snaps that freeze pipes, ice over the Great Lakes, and send snow totals skyrocketing. Sometimes we even see a phenomenon called a sudden stratospheric warming event, a major disruption of the polar vortex that can flip the pattern for an entire month. During these events, the vortex splits or weakens dramatically, and the jet stream buckles. Cold air floods into North America, while warmer air builds near the pole. Now combine that weaker polar vortex with what we already talked about, a, a neutral Enzo leaving the jet stream more flexible, and a massive warm pool in the North Pacific forcing a ridge and trough pattern. These three forces work together like gears in a machine. The ridge over the Pacific amplifies the trough of the central and eastern U.S., and a weakened polar vortex provides the fuel by sending repeated shots of Arctic air south. This is why the polar vortex is the big wild card. If it stays weaker than usual, we're looking at a winter where Arctic air could visit again and again, bringing frequent cold snaps and potentially some blockbuster snow events for the northern tier, the Great Lakes, and the interior northeast. And when we line up the puzzle pieces, a weak La Nina or cool neutral, an expansive warm pool in the North Pacific, and a weaker polar vortex, one winter immediately jumps to the top top of the list, 2013 to 2014. That winter was infamous for relentless cold and snow across the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Northeast. The polar vortex headlines dominated the news as Arctic air repeatedly plunged south, 
leading to prolonged sub-zero stretches and heavy lake effect snow. The northern jet stream stayed locked in, funneling storm after storm across the same regions. This year's setup looks strikingly similar, but there's one key difference. The blob is slightly stronger. That could amplify the ridge over the west coast even more and dig the downstream trough deeper, potentially making things even more dramatic. Other analog years worth mentioning include 2007 to 2008, which brought frequent storms and above average snow across much of the northern U.S., and even 1976 to 77 and 1973 to 74, which shared a similar La Nina pattern and featured memorable cold waves. The message from history is clear. When you combine these three factors, you often get a high-impact winter pattern. And it's not just the analog years pointing to a big winter. The models are backing it up too. The Canadian seasonal model is showing well below average temperatures through nearly the entire winter across the northern tier of the U.S., much of southern Canada, the northern plains, Midwest, and Northeast. This isn't just a brief cold snap. The signal stretches across December, January, and February, suggesting repeated Arctic intrusions and long-lasting cold spells. When history and the models line up like this, it's a strong sign that this winter will be pretty intense. And that brings us to my 2025-2026 winter forecast. Starting with the temperature outlook, this winter's temperature pattern is shaping up to be anything but subtle. The driving theme is a widespread, colder than normal signal across much of the northern half of the U.S., contrasted sharply by pockets of notable warmth across the southwest and the southern tier. The strongest and most persistent cold weather will lock in over the northern plains, the upper Midwest, and the western Great Lakes, where temperatures are expected to run well below seasonal averages. This is the heart of the Arctic pipeline, a zone repeatedly exposed to deep running cold outbreaks and fast moving clippers. Wind chills will bite, snowpack could linger, and winter will feel very long in this region. Surrounding that core, broad portions of the Pacific Northwest, Intermountain West, Northern Rockies, Central Plains, Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Northeast are expected to trend colder than average. These areas will sit on the downstream side of the jet stream, favoring more frequent cold intrusions than in a typical winter. The cold isn't constant everywhere, but the pattern strongly supports repeated chill events and an active storm track that reinforces the anomaly. Further south, the story changes completely. The southern plains, southeast, and gulf coast lean warmer than average, though not dramatically so. A more variable pattern keeps winter from locking in. Brief cold shots are still possible, especially if blocking develops, but warmth likely wins on the seasonal average. The standout warmth develops across the southwest and the four corners, which appear poised for a well above average winter. Strong ridging favors suppressed storm activity, more sunshine, and even drought concerns. Extending northward at times, this ridge will deflect the intense Arctic air east of the Rockies, sparing central California and the Great Basin, which also lean milder and warmer than average. The precipitation outlook is just as interesting. The northern half leans wetter and snowier, while much of the south trends drier with major implications for snowfall, drought, and storm potential. The most consistently active zone stretches from the Rockies through the northwest, where storm frequency should be above average. Many areas are likely to finish the season wetter and snowier than normal, with the highest confidence in the Cascades and the northern Rockies of Idaho and Montana, which may run well above average thanks to cold air reinforcement meeting repeated Pacific storms. Snowpack prospects here look strong, which is welcome news for spring water supply. Further east, the central U.S. into the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and interior northeast also lean above normal in terms of precipitation, with a strong likelihood that most of this falls as snow. The active storm track repeatedly targets this corridor, especially when Arctic air presses south and locks into place. That overlap of cold and storminess is why this region holds strong potential for above-average snowfall totals and frequent winter hazards. South of the battleground, the pattern flips completely. Much of the southeast and the Gulf Coast, particularly east of New Orleans, trends well below average in terms of precipitation as the main storm corridor shifts north, especially if subtropical ridging builds in, and the desert southwest also trends well below average and combined with warm anomalies, this raises drought concerns heading into spring. Meanwhile, Florida, much of Texas, portions of the Deep South and the Western Gulf Coast, Central California, and the Great Basin land in a below average category. 
not as deeply suppressed as the southeast or the desert southwest, but still noticeably quieter compared to normal winters. Central California's dry signal adds to growing concerns about reduced Sierra snowpack and early season water deficits. When temperatures and precipitation are blended together, this winter reveals a sharp, dramatic pattern. A frigid, storm-loaded northern tier, a mild, quieter southern tier, and a volatile middle zone where anything is possible. Snow, ice, or even severe weather. The core of winter centers on the northern plains, the upper Midwest, and the western Great Lakes, where deeply entrenched Arctic air and a steady storm pipeline create well below average temperatures and above normal snowfall. This region is winter's bullseye. Prolonged snowpack, intense cold, and frequent blizzard setups are all on the table. Surrounding that core, the northwest, the northern Rockies, Midwest, Ohio Valley, and interior northeast trend colder than average with above normal precipitation. The Cascades and northern Rockies are positioned for well above average snowfall with strong snowpack potential. The Great Lakes and the interior northeast also stand out. Repeated Arctic surges colliding with active storm energy set the stage for elevated snow totals, including highly enhanced lake effect snowfall. But the middle of the country is where things get very interesting. From the central and southern plains through the Mid-South into the Ohio Valley and even potentially the central Appalachians, cold air repeatedly dives south while warm, moist Gulf air lifts north. That clash creates a mixed precipitation corridor, a classic battleground unlike either extreme. Expect snow one week, freezing rain the next, cold rain after that. Some storms may deepen enough to tap warm sector instability further south, bringing winter season severe weather to parts of the south. Further south, the pattern calms. Much of the southeast, the Gulf Coast, and the desert southwest runs warmer and drier, with only occasional storms. East of New Orleans into the interior southeast, precipitation could be well below average, heightening drought concerns. The Carolinas may land in a quieter middle ground, mild and somewhat dry, with occasional storms, but without too many extremes. Across the west, central California, northern Nevada, and parts of the Great Basin lean mild with only occasional storm systems. Not a big winter, but not bone dry like the desert southwest either. So to recap, a very frigid and snowy setup is likely across the northern tier. A warm and quieter season dominates the south, and in between, a wild mix of snow, ice, and even severe thunderstorms. If you like snow and winter weather, this is going to be a very exciting winter, especially for the northern U.S., but at the same time, some of these storms will cause significant disruptions and could even be dangerous. But the big winners for snow and winter weather this winter look to be the northern plains, the upper Midwest, and the Great Lakes as well as the interior northeast. The, the biggest winter impact will be well below average temperatures and above normal snowfall. The Cascades and northern Rockies also an, another winter in terms of snowpack, especially that heavy mountain snow and well above average precipitation will be very helpful for the snowpack there. The Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and even parts of the central Appalachians looking at frequent winter storms, that snow and ice mix with uh, major travel problems expected there. The storm track goes from the southern plains through the Ohio Valley into the northeast. Major storm systems developing with nor'easter potential. Now, the losers in terms of winter weather, the places expecting a quieter, less active winter, are going to be the southeast and the Gulf Coast, especially east of New Orleans and into Florida. It's expected to be warmish with well below average precipitation, which could raise some drought concerns. The Four Corners, the Great Basin, with warm and dry conditions, with uh, reduced snowpack, especially in the higher elevations. The Southern Plains, the lower Mississippi Valley and the Deep South, also looking at near average to warmer than average. Mostly dry, but severe weather is possible during big storm systems. The desert southwest is looking at warm and very dry. The drought there is likely to expand. This winter has the ingredients to be one of the most dramatic in years, but patterns can shift, so stay tuned for updates to the forecast. If you found this forecast helpful, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the updated outlooks and weather updates as we get closer to this potentially wild winter. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone, out.